Welcome! You are one of the few rare people that's willing to use this powerful tool known as fasting to help you break through a weight loss plateau, to help you maybe get some mental clarity, to help you reset your metabolism, and just to make your mitochondria feel like they're good and new again, which is a problem in this day and age. Extended fasting has been pivotal in breaking my resistant weight loss on my 113 pound weight loss journey, like pivotal. I struggled with binge eating. I struggled with very resistant weight loss. I would be the person that would be doing it all, going into the gym, or working at home. I actually started my weight loss journey with home workouts. Not a lot of people know that. I only entered the gym last year after getting into an accident. So you can lose weight at home. And I used mainly YouTube workouts. So shout out to YouTube and shout out to me because I definitely will be creating workout programs on YouTube now that I am basically a certified personal trainer um, who will be continuously be certified in hopefully fingers crossed, coaching people in real life and of course online. But going back to extended fasting, something that's, you know, rare for someone who's a personal trainer and rare to begin with. A lot of people look at fasting as, oh my God, you're hurting yourself. Oh my God, you need to eat. We are in a society that is obsessed with frequent eating. And I don't know why people aren't tying two and two together because it's this frequent eating that's lead or led to this obesity epidemic. Not only that, that has led to, you know, we're seeing cancers in young people. How many millennials do I know in their 30s have breast cancer here and there? Hormonal imbalances, PCOS, all of this stuff. Remember, cancer is an inflammatory disease, so is obesity. But anyway, I wanna talk about extended fasting and how you can use it on your weight loss journey to your advantage. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Yella Joy and I lost the majority of my weight eating a one meal a day fasting schedule, which is a form of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is fasting for 24 hours or less within the day. And basically OMAD is fasting for 20 hours and eating within a four hour eating window or real OMAD fasting for 23, 24 hours and eating within a one hour eating window. And the purpose of fasting is to make that metabolic switch. So what happens when we eat processed foods? What happens when we eat processed carbohydrates specifically? Now, I wanna to touch base on that because people talk about bacon. Bacon is technically a processed food, but it is the processed carbohydrates that are a problem. Bacon is probably the one food that I totally give an exception to that is processed. But when you think about it, prosciutto, the way it is processed in Italy, I know they hang it up and it dries for like, a few months at a time and then you have it, that's technically processed. Processed meats, eh, we'll, we'll, we'll put those ones aside, minus hot dogs. I feel like hot dogs are a bit, eh, cause hot dogs are full of crap. Hot dogs have processed carbohydrates in them. That's why I said eh to hot dogs, but pure curate processed meats are okay. Um, but going back, it's the processed carbohydrates that basically cause wreak havoc on our body. Our body was designed in a state of where food wasn't readily available. We are not designed in a state where food is readily available, which is why we're seeing obesity at its max, which is why we're seeing chronic fatigue at its max. We're seeing a lot of metabolic illnesses, a lot of illnesses related to inflammation and high glucose levels. Mental health is one of them. Yes, the glucose spikes have been associated with mental health um, issues from schizophrenia. Look at Dr. Jason or Chris Palmer, Dr. Chris Palmer out of Harvard. Harvard he talks about this stuff, um, how he's used the ketogenic diet to help people settle down psychiatric illnesses. But it's the processed carbohydrates that are doing this. And what happens when we eat processed carbs? In nature, carbs are found with fiber. They're, they're found in fruits and vegetables. So carbs aren't found on their own in nature, not at all. Even look at the sugar cane. When I was a kid, you know, being from parents who are from Grenada, my mom would always used to import things from Grenada and we would suck on sugar cane and we would get the sweetness out of it. But in order to get to it, there's a bunch of fibrous material around it. So if you look at carbs in nature, it's surrounded by fiber. 
When you look at processed carbs, it's naked. They're surrounded by nothing. So why fiber is important? Why I say eat your vegetables? Because fibers reduces that glucose spike. Fiber also helps to feed your gut microbiome. The human body and the gut microbiome basically evolved in a symbiotic relationship over evolutionary time. So over time, we, you know, provided a home for this gut microbiome because they did process is for us like processing the fiber and we'd feed them in a whole lot. So the carbs, the processed carbs kind of ruins that relationship, which is why we're seeing people with a lot of gut health issues. Um, I'm getting to the point of fasting because this all makes sense. So basically when we eat naked carbs, we're spiking our glucose levels constantly. And those glucose spikes cause havoc to our mitochondria. And our mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So when our mitochondria is out of whack, it can lead precedences to many, many, many diseases and make it very difficult for us to lose weight because the mitochondria is responsible for directing processes of fat burning. So if our mitochondria is malfunctioning, of course it's gonna be very difficult to lose weight because a malfunctioned mitochondria leads to insatiable hunger, being really hard to stay in a calorie deficit and all of that. Now let's bring it all back to fasting. How does fasting help heal our mitochondria? Fasting helps to heal our mitochondria because it gives our body a chance to rest. It gives our body to go through a process known as autophagy, which is a process of cellular repair. And autophagy is triggered monumentally when you fast for 17 hours minimum. So when you put yourself in a state of autophagy, you're putting your body in a state of healing where the mitochondria can repair itself. So when the mitochondria repairs itself, you're able to stick to a diet properly. You're able to lose weight and not feel hungry all the time. You're able to find success and feel good and have energy. These are all symptoms of mitochondria dysfunction. So when you fast, you help your body reset itself. And fasting is something that the human body has adapted to doing because we lived in a moment of feast and famine. And not a lot of people understand this. And fasting gets a bad rap. They're like, oh, you need to eat, blah, blah, blah. I find it really hard to lose weight when I have to eat more. So I don't know how I'm going to be a bodybuilder. We'll figure that out later on. <laughs> That's going to be hard. It's easier to reduce my calorie intake and to stick to a healthier diet when I intermittent fast. I was doing this before I started losing weight in my 20s. I was doing this like as like a, like a late teenager. So 18, 19, I automatically did it. I already knew it. That when I would not eat, when I skip breakfast and I skip lunch and I would start eating around two o'clock, it was easier for me to stay in a calorie deficit. That's because you're putting yourself in a state of fat burning. It allows your body to say, oh, there's no food. So guess what? We're gonna exercise other methods of gaining energy through our fat stores. Fasting forces our body to burn fat. It forces our body to dig deep and start metabolizing excess fat and excess sugar that is stored in our liver, that is stored in our blood, that is stored in our muscles, that is stored in other organs throughout the body. So this is where fasting becomes powerful. Now, how can you use fasting to help kickstart your journey? You can use fasting as a tool to help shrink that appetite, as a tool to help stabilize those blood sugars, because that's where things are going crazy. It's the irregular spikes in blood sugar. Because when you fast, you're stabilizing your blood sugar. When you fast, you're in, a, you're in ketosis. Your body's producing ketones because the process of producing ketones is the process of burning fat. So it puts yourself in that situation. Now I wanna get back to what I really wanted to talk about. Now, how can you utilize fasting on your weight loss journey? Let's talk about OMAD for a second. Every time I transitioned to a metabolic diet, I fasted most of the time, except in the beginning. But with OMAD, I find it easier to jump into one meal a day if I do an extended fast, 40, eight hours minimum. I find it easier. When you fast for 48 to 72 hours, it gives your body a chance to calm down. It gives your body a chance to go through processes of healing, processes of 
processes of metabolic correction, which is what's not happening when you're frequently eating. It brings down, brings down your insulin levels because insulin is the storage hormone. You're not gonna lose weight when your insulin levels are high. That's why I don't understand why doctors give type two diabetics insulin. You notice how they just gain more and more weight but they come up with a, we're not gonna get into that. I was gonna get into Ozempic and the whole lot. Let's just stick a, a topic at hand. But fasting allows you to bring everything at a lower baseline level. So when you get off the fast, and if you're disciplined with it, it's easier to start your weight loss journey. So how can you be disciplined when getting off a fast? It's so important to eat whole foods. Let the fast be the reset for you. Let it be the chance where you can start eating whole foods. You're getting rid of processed carbohydrates. Maybe you use a fast to jump into a keto diet. I think it's just easier to do it that way. So there's so many ways you can use extended fasting on your weight loss journey. I like to use, if you're serious about fasting, I like to have a fasting block maybe once a month of intense fasting. I don't like the excessive fasting because it puts your body in too much of a dire state. Like fasting, doing a 36 to 72 hour fast once a month is great. And then you can do shorter frequent fasts like OMAD is a great fast. I love intermittent fasting for that, especially OMAD fasting. Um, I'm not a big fan of the rolling fast again, unless it works for you. But for me personally, I'm not a big fan of them. They have worked for people, but it's coming off those rolling fasts. That's where things happen. So you just got to have discernment. It's very important to balance out your fasting, fasting and feasting, because in order to lose weight and keep it off, you need to know how to properly eat. And that's why I like OMAD. I think OMAD is the happy medium between fasting and eating. The 36 hour fast is a very close, close second, but you want to be able to learn how to eat because you want to be able to incorporate other aspects of your weight loss journey or keeping that weight off of a healthy lifestyle. What do I mean by other aspects? Exercising. You want to be able to exercise. If you are fasting so much, you're not going to be able to exercise and build muscle. Building muscle is so important for weight loss because it's going to boost your metabolism. It's going to increase as more insulin receptor sites so it's going to keep your basal metabolic rate high and it's going to be hard to put on more weight when you have muscle because you're going to be constantly burning calories anyway that was another rant i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you made it this far into the video just put in a bunch of fish emojis and i'll send you guys mad lad take care bye